Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and it is time for the Roundup for the week ending on Saturday, February 25th. The Roundup is the show where I take a look back, take a look forward, and run my mouth a bunch, and uh, some of you guys choose to listen to that. Cool. The game on your screen is I Don't Know, because I haven't recorded it yet, so I hope you're enjoying it, and maybe I even put the name on the screen right about now, so in case you're not recognizing it, you'll know what it is. So I'm feeling a little under the weather. Uh, I was eating at a Mexican restaurant, and I saw something that sounded really cool, uh, because it combined two things that I really love, uh, cheese and sausage. Uh, it was a chicken breast, fried, and then smothered in cheese and chorizo sausage. And I thought, hey, that sounds really good. And then I ate it, and it was really good. And then my stomach was like, oh, fuck no. And I have not been feeling very good lately, so uh, mm -hmm. I still have to try to record my Rift content after this, and I'm hoping that the old gurgly belly will calm down. So if you hear anything going like, that's probably my stomach. And uh, that really sucks. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about things. This past week was a slow one, of course, uh, my effort to ever put out Retro Roulette was uh, once again, once again, thwarted, and uh, all we had was one video, so uh, let's talk about that video, it was Max and the Magic Marker. Max and the Magic Marker, really, really enjoyable game, uh, I did say in the video it's $20, and it is $20 on Steam, it is, however, uh, much less on Desura, I don't remember the price, but it was under $10, something like 8 or $9, so much more reasonable on Desura, but uh, on Steam, for some reason, it is $20, and I'm imagining that's probably just the developer uh, compensating for the portion that Steam takes out, which is really weird because most developers don't do that. Uh, they just put their game on Steam for the same price as every other platform and they just eat it on Steam, but apparently press play is like, uh, no, we ain't doing that, but you know, imagine them saying that in like a Danish accent. Um, I'm not going to offend any of my audience who are actually from Daneland. But yeah, getting back to the point, uh, Max and the Magic Marker, it was a pretty fun game. Uh, I had a little bit of accidental racism in the video, uh, sorry about that. But uh, all in all, I had a really good time. Everything about the game was great. The mechanics uh, of the platforming were solid, the mechanics of the drawing were solid, the uh, gameplay was uh, good and rounded, you know, you had things to collect uh, in the level for score, and then you had little secret bits to collect your little blobs of, I guess, ink. And uh, then you had uh, some colorful graphics, nice looking game. I really liked when you switched it over to hand-drawn, the way that that looked. Really, really cool, really authentic. The only thing that didn't impress me was the music. And the odd thing about that is the music is actually kind of held out as something that's supposed to impress you, because it was apparently done by some Danish hip-hop folk band or something. But it just didn't really end up impressing me uh, really at all. Uh, it was fine, but it sounded like something they could have bought out of a catalog. So, uh, eh, on the music. So yeah, Max and the Magic Marker really enjoyed it. Uh, but, uh, that was pretty much all we did this week. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> but, uh, take a look for sure on the website. If you want to read my article about playing demos, I played a bunch of demos, uh, over the weekend when I was taking care of my kid, or when I was neglecting my kid and playing video games instead. And, uh, I, I loved pretty much all of them, uh, unanimously. Uh, they were really, really great. Uh, I did end up playing Scary Girl, which I mentioned in the uh, article that I had not yet played. It ended up being a nice, solid platformer. Nothing too impressive, but, uh, well, it was impressive. It just wasn't overly impressive, I guess. Platformers, having come off of Rayman Origins, it felt a lot like Rayman Origins in that it had a lot of those familiar uh, mechanics in it, uh, but it just, it just didn't hit the same home run that Rayman Origins hit. So, not a bad game, just when playing it amongst competition that is very high quality, you oftentimes don't really see it for what it truly is. If I had sat down and played Scary Girl by itself without having also very recently played Rayman Origins, my opinion might have been different. Hmm. All right, well, that was pretty much all we did this week. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do next week? Well, next week's going to be a bit of a weird one. Uh, this is supposed to be the part where I say, I'm going to do retro roulette, and if I don't do it, I'm going to do a fucking puppet show. But th I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that anymore. Uh, because the fact of the matter is, Retro Roulette is something that I really like the concept of, but right now I'm just not feeling it. I tried to do a recording of it with my rumbly tumbly, with my rumbly tumbly, and it just didn't work. Um, I just couldn't, 
I couldn't feel it out. I couldn't get it right. So I think I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board with the format. Uh, I want to make it something more impressive. I don't want to make it just me talking about gameplay as I'm playing. I don't even want to do what I was talking about last week of, of taking some verbal notes while playing and then going back and doing re-recording. Like, I want to really do a good job on this. I want it to be something that I put out like twice a month and I want it to be my flagship thing. And rushing that out just to get it out is not respecting what I want it to be. So you're not going to hear me mention Retro Roulette again until it's ready. It's not going to be part of my normal rotation. Uh, it's going to be an extra bit of content. So I'm not going to say anything about it until it's ready to come out. And I will then say, okay, Retro Roulette is coming out this next Wednesday or whatever. Period. So, yes, I am tucking my tail between my legs and I'm going back to the drawing board with Retro Roulette because I like the concept, but I don't like what I've been able to produce thus far. So, what are we going to do next week then? Well, I've already recorded a video for Shatter, which is a really cool breakout retro update, kind of in the vein of what uh, we saw with Super Crossfire. Really, really interesting game. You will definitely want to check that video out. And also, I'm going to do the uh, the Mojam, the Humble Mojam. I'm going to do the three games that were released during the Humble Mojam. If you don't know what the Mojam was, three game companies, uh, Mojang, Wolffire, and Oxide Games, sat down over a, a long weekend and made a game for charity. And you could buy it on the Humble Bundle site. And a lot of people did. And it made a good amount of money for charity, and they have produced three games. Mojam uh, made a game called uh, Catacomb Snatch, uh, which I have already recorded video of. And uh, I can't remember, remember the name of the other two off the top of my head, uh, but I've had some technical difficulties. The Wolf Fire game, uh, I've, had a tro I've, I've had difficulty running it and getting it to, to run uh, to, for any sustained amount of time. There's a Flash version, so I may try that. Uh, but the, uh, the Ox Eye really... I've had trouble recording it. I don't know why. I don't know if it's what it's coded in or what, but uh, I'm going to try to solve those technical issues over the next few days and get those videos out next week. If nothing else, it'll be one big video. Uh, if, but if nothing else, it will be just Catacomb Snatch because I've, I've definitely recorded Catacomb Snatch. So if you're interested in uh, those games from the Mojam, uh, I know Catacomb Snatch, the source code was released. So you can actually already download uh, a tweaked version of it called Uber Catacomb Snatch. And that version fixes some bugs because basically Mo Mojang put out the game and they said, there you go, it's done. That's what we're going to do on it. If anybody wants to use the source code to fix it, go ahead and fix it. Uh, Oxeye and Wolffire took a little bit of extra time with their game. Uh, although that doesn't necessarily mean the game is fully polished. It just means that uh, they took, uh, a, a, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours after the jam had ended to actually uh, polish up their game a little bit more and, and get it out there. So we'll be checking out those games if everything goes according to plan. I'll probably write some kind of article or something for the website as well. And uh, other than that, I don't really know. I think that's pretty much all we've got. Uh, my grumbly tummy is uh, calming down a little bit, so I'm happy about that. Uh, let's see, anything else? Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, oh, play Realm of the Mad God on Steam, please. I've been playing that game for a while now. A couple of my friends turned me on to it, and uh, we've been playing that game for a little while before it came out on Steam. Check it out. It's free to play. It's a uh, it's an 8-bit uh, sort of style, shoot 'em up uh, RPG adventure game. It, that sounds weird, but just check it out. It's a charming little game, and I think you'll find yourself uh, logging into it to play for a few minutes. And the best thing about it is it also carries over everything between your Steam account and the web-based version of the game. So you can actually uh, play it when you're away from your computer, you can play it when you're at home on Steam, all that sort of stuff. So it's a really, really nice game to just pop into, screw around for a few minutes, and uh, go away happy. Awesome game. Check it out. A lot of free-to-plays going up on Steam lately. Check all those out. Free games are great. Also, uh, some of you will be happy to know I finally own Deus Ex. I bought it during the uh, weekend sale this weekend. Uh, I had really been wanting to play this game for so very long, but you know me and in money, we're hard to separate. But the price was right, so I picked it up as, long, uh, as well as the DLC. And I'm going to be playing the hell out of that game in every spare moment uh, very, very soon. So, uh, yeah, really happy about that. Really, really happy about that. I've almost pulled the trigger on it in a couple of previous sales, but getting it down to $10, that was just the right price. Really, really excited about owning that game finally. 
So yeah, I think that's uh, that's gonna do it for us, guys. Definitely gonna do it. So thanks for hanging around. Thanks for listening to all my bull crap, and uh, thanks for understanding about retro roulette. And if you don't understand about retro roulette, well, I don't care. So there, take that. All right, guys. I have been Big Dave, and as always, take it easy. <laughs>